Hey, here in North Carolina, when you are doing the rifle season, you have to wear blaze orange hat at least. Some people like vests. Unlike other states, we don't have to have the entire vest, okay? But um, I typically carry a sidearm in a chest rig. Um, this is a tool that you won't see me hunting without a sidearm because it can, you can dispatch of wounded animals pretty quickly with it could serve some other purposes I've even in the past have had to use it to signal with okay in addition to that I carry a GPS um, satellite combination uh, communicator there are sometimes I'm hunting in areas where there is no cell service. But with this SpotX device here, you can send and receive messages via satellite as long as the antenna can see the sky. I've got preloaded messages if I have an emergency. And also, this SpotX, if you fall or if you're injured, you just open the SOS panel and push it and uh, it will send an emergency signal with your exact location to the International um, Distress Call Center and they can uh, dispatch adequate EMS or whatever to you but um, you know I hunt a certain way that's beneficial to me through the years I kill most of my deer in hardwood or swampy bottoms like this. I have shot and uh, harvested wild game over agricultural fields, but this is my preferred method. This type of environment. Okay. I've had people contact me and they want to hunt, they want to start hunting. They want to do some of the things that they've seen me and other hunters do. Uh, I tell them right away, you know, you need to make a trip to some sort of outdoor shop with me. You know, Cabela's, Bass Pro Shop, whatever you have, Gander Mountain, if they're still in your area. And basically, if you want to start and start correctly, let's make that trip and be prepared to kiss about $5,000 goodbye on one of those trips with me. Because if you're going to outfit yourself with the proper gear, if you're going to get the type of rifle and scope that you're looking for, which is a big portion of what that budget would be, you know, that's the kind of money you're going to be spending. I get guys all the time talk to me, well, I bought a package gun from Walmart. Well, that package gun will do. It's sufficient. It's bare minimum. It's sufficient. But when you hunt the elements and you want to be um, hunting in environments where you're not limited, um, you need to spend a little money and get you a little versatile gear. And you may need more than one firearm like I hunt with. But the guys that talk to me and want to come hunt, hunt with us, and if you're thinking you're going to get away with um, a quick trip to Walmart and buy you $500 worth of gear in your set, it's not going to cut it. You're going to be uncomfortable when the elements set in. Game moves best in harsh or miserable conditions for hunting. You got to be able to hunt in the snow. You got to be able to hunt in the wind, rain, those type of environments. That's what sets you aside from the person who just tries it on one time and they say, well, hey, I got lucky and I killed the deer. Well, you can, but if you're going to do it consistently, if you're going to harvest game consistently, you're going to have to step up step up and do what needs to be done as far as with your gear okay so spend that money get that good gear get that gear you can get an average rifle but put some excellent optics on it 
the optics will bring an average rifle up to a more workable class. But if you're going to get a good rifle and you put poor optics on it, you're limiting yourself. Get you a set of binoculars that match your optics. One of the things I hear a lot of hunters are frustrated by, especially novice, they say, well, I could see him in my binoculars, but I put my binoculars down and I couldn't see him in my rifle scope. Or my rifle scope was foggy. So I match up my binoculars to the power and the objective of my rifle scope. So there's almost no difference when you switch. Okay. There's a lot of people that get out here and they get lucky. First time out, they sit down, they kill a 10 pointer with a 22 inch spread. That is luck. Okay. And they think they have mastered hunting, but they haven't. When you can hunt the wind, when you can pattern an animal, when you can vocalize with an animal, when you know your woodsmanship and you're not getting lost in the woods, when you don't have people preparing things for you and you just come in and sit down and pull the trigger, that's when you're stepping your game up, okay? So I know I just stepped on a lot of toes out there, but hey, it's what it is, okay? A good hunter should know his way around the woods, should be able to navigate, should know first aid, should know the animal's characteristics and patterns. And you know, and you should be able to target a particular big game animal and hunt that animal and hunt that animal down and harvest that animal, whether it takes two days, two weeks, or two months. That's where the rewarding portion come in because you have match wits with mother nature, the elements, and the animal that you've targeted. So I made this video because there are many people that come to me and they, hey, I won't do this hunt. I never done it before and get it ready and I'll come. No, that's not a hunt. And I'm gonna tell you all something else. If you do not eat wild game, you're missing out. But more important, if you don't eat wild game, don't bother about asking me to come hunt with me because, you know, you, you, you belong somewhere else. I'm not going to put in the work that I put in and do the things that I do for somebody that just wants to pull the trigger, see the animal fall, and go take a picture with it. You know, there's lots of wild game uh, recipes out there that are very, very good. You stock your freezer, you make sausage, you make jerky, you make bologna, all sorts of things with wild game. So we don't waste meat. All right. I'm going to walk you up and show you just a few tools of the trade. This is my hunting truck. Always keep a cooler. Um, I don't see the need to pay for that other company when you can get this one right here for almost half the price. Um, I keep a blind or two, a climber, a seat uh, readily available, okay? Uh, because I hunt in various areas, okay, the arsenal consists of, this is, I use this 4570 for in the woods, good for deer and bear. If I'm gonna climb and shoot, um, hunt over agriculture, soybean field or whatever, 300 short mag, okay, um, often when I'm in the woods I take a pellet rifle with me because I shoot a lot of fox squirrels and you can shoot this pellet rifle here, it's quiet enough to where you can harvest a squirrel or rabbit or something and it does not disturb your deer population. I also go from time to time and carry a um, hunting handgun. Um, I just like switching up and this is my 375 JD Jones and I'll use it with my climber um, because it's easy to maneuver in the climber or I'll do a bench rest with it from a box stand and 
when you practice with these 200 yard shots on big game are very attainable. My longest has been 168 yards. Good optics are a must. Okay. Um, these are my Steiner um, binoculars. They're 10 by 56. This is my hunting companion. I may switch up between these, but I always have this. As we walk along, I'm coming back, this is what the back of my hunting truck looks like. I've got rain gear if I need it, ghillie suit if I need it, lots of other hunting supplies. I've got over there a first aid kit. Um, Everything, you know, scent control. If I have to hunt in a bad wind, I got scent control, although I try to hunt into the wind. And something else I like to carry is a bag of plaster. Um, every now and then I run across an unusual animal track that I want to cast and keep. So that plaster is really good to mix up, cast the track, and you um, can preserve that track that you want to keep. This is one of my typical setups for hunting the um, low-lying swamp areas in eastern North Carolina. As you can see, down at the end of that roadway, there's a permanent stand. Okay. Roadway is baited about a hundred and forty yards away um, with corn. Um, there are trails on both sides of the roadway leading into low line bedding areas. Um, right here, a valuable hunting tool is a trail cam. Have that bad boy fixed to a tree where you can see what's coming to the bait piles on a regular basis. Okay. If you look back deeper into the forest, that slopes down into a creek. That creek um, is about 19 miles long. So it acts as a super highway for deer passing through these low-lying areas. Some of them choose to stop off, bed down, feed. Some of them take up in this area. And that's what makes for a good hunt for me, okay? Some other hunters might decide to do it another way. You got plenty of trees for climbing stands, for bow hunting, and pistol hunting if that's what you choose to do but this is a typical setup for woodland swamp areas I like this type of setup because deer are active in this environment all day long uh, versus agriculture you are usually catching them in the fields early in the morning or they're feeding late in the evening. This is an ideal setup for an all-day hunt. 